What's the word, y'all? The NBA season is not even a week old, and I am absolutely hooked. We've had Ja Morant go for 49. Dame is back. He gave us two back-to-back -back 40 pieces. We've had game winners. We've had overtimes. We've had everything, man. And one of the reasons I really love the game of basketball, and I guess sports in general, um, this is the case, it's extremely, extremely unpredictable. Like, yeah, we've had seasons where we knew it was going to be Cavs and Warriors in the finals, but we still watch all 82 games of the other 28 teams because on a day-to-day -day basis, this sport is unpredictable. So unpredictable that the Utah Jazz traded one of the greatest defensive centers of all time, a future NBA Hall of Famer, and a one-man engine on the offensive side of the ball and got back draft picks and scraps. And they are one of the last undefeated teams left this season. Everybody raved, including me, about the 76ers offseason. This is the year for them to be a contender. James Harden took a pay cut. He looks slimmer. Joel Embiid is back-to-back runner-up for MVP. They don't have a win. The Lakers have Anthony Davis and LeBron James and have not cracked the win column. I'm sorry, Portland Trailblazer fans. You also are undefeated. You know what I'm saying? Dame is back. You are also undefeated. I mean, one of the last teams left. That is not something to sneeze at. And listen, I wasn't a believer. And I'll be honest with you, Trailblazer fans. Don't be mad. I'm still not a believer. I need a, a bigger sample size. But if you do remember my video where I was trying to predict the Western Conference standings. Actually, let's just play it. So listen to a slightly younger me try to predict the Western Conference standings. L listen to what I said about Portland. But their depth is questionable. And I think overall their defense is going to be questionable. I'm putting Portland at 11. And I don't feel good about it. I don't feel good about it. This, this right here might be the thing that bites me the most because Dame is such a monster that I, I can see him just carrying his team to like one of the topper and spots. But like, again, somebody has to end up there and I'm saying, and uh, he's in the process of potentially carrying them to one of those top end teams. I'm done with the Sacramento Kings, bro. Every single season, these boys convinced me that this is going to be the year where they break out and make a play in or whatever. They've looked terrible. They gave up a million points in the first half today and I cut the game off and eventually they came back to almost tie it. They lost. They haven't got a win. But anyway, shout out to Portland. I, I'm going to say I still don't believe it too much because out of the three games, Dame had to go supernova in two of them for them to barely edge out the win. But just give, give it more time, Trailblazer fans, and maybe it'll make me a believer. But shout out to him. I want to start off with the Lakers, though. They're in the thumbnail. Y'all know we had to talk about it because it is the trending top in the basketball, which is weird. Boy, I guess it's not. It's the Lakers. The Lakers are the biggest market in basketball, and they have Anthony Davis and LeBron James. So, of course, um, them starting off 0-3, they could have been 3-0, and and it still would be the trending topic. But let's talk about it. I'm tired of giving this team the benefit of the doubt. I don't even know why I did Well, I know why I did it. I did it because LeBron James and Anthony Davis are on the court together, on the team together. And in recent history, they won a championship not too far, along, uh, far ago. I know the roster's different. But even last year, when they missed the playoffs, when Anthony Davis and LeBron played together, they were a solid team. So I gave them the benefit of the doubt. And through the first three games, this could not be any worse. Actually, that's not true. Because one of the positive things about the Lakers season so far is their defense has been pretty damn good. Small sample size, but they're second in defensive rating so far this season. We probably shouldn't even be using those numbers because it's only three games to the season. But the eye test is telling me that their defense look extremely improved compared to last season where it was dreadful. So that's a plus. Bad side is you, you kind of got rid of every single shooter that was there for you last season and now in the words of lebron james you can't throw a penny into the ocean and that's no exaggeration because me and my homie mike was watching this game together he is a laker fan and i think in the third quarter the lakers hit like three threes or something like that and you you would have thought that he had steph curry on his roster he was so damn happy about those three threes but through the first two games they couldn't do that i mean through the first three games of the season they are shooting a whopping 21 percent from three as a team and they are attempting the seventh most in all of basketball. So they're they're taking a ton of three-pointers and missing every single one of them. It's so bad that, that when we get to the crunch time of that Portland Trailblazer game, of the Clippers games, teams are legitimately just packing the paint. There's moments in this game where Yusuf Nurk has decided he didn't want to contest nothing. And then when we got down to the stretch after Darvin Ham put Russell Westbrook back into the game, we go talk about that, Yusuf Nurk has had the Russell Westbrook assignment, and he didn't move. In the game before that, versus the Clippers, Zubac had the Russell Westbrook assignment down the stretch and he didn't move i hate it man i hate it for russ man because he's a player that i am rooting for heavily because I, I honestly think he's going through a lot yeah he's been bad on the court but he is also going through a lot whether it be the media the fan fan uh reception like i was at the lakers clippers game and whenever he touched the ball the fans were screaming pass it pass it don't shoot that has to take a toll on a player but specifically a player that just a few years ago had months where he was averaging like 30 10 and 10 that's not too far away from, from what he is now. Hey, look, I just remembered that bro took a jump shot while up in the game with like 30 seconds to go early in the clock. 
and he said that he was doing it for a two for one when they were winning. Uh, like, what? what is... Let's get back. But then again, things like this are true. Russell Westbrook has shot four for 26. That is 15% in the last two games. That is tied for the worst field goal percentage over any two game span by a Laker player in the last 50 years. Last 50 years. He tied himself from earlier this year in January. That is crazy. And this Photoshop right here is great because Victor Wabanyama in a Pelicans jersey. You're like, why is that relevant? Well, because the Lakers traded for Anthony Davis. And in that trade, there is a pick right swap, meaning that the Pelicans can see what the Lakers are doing and get around a lottery and the Lakers miss the playoffs and say, that's my pick. And that pick could end up, oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm still confused on Rob Palenka. I know he won a championship a few years ago, but the fact that he got an extension after last year's terrible roster is insane to me because he didn't make it any better. You know what I'm saying? They have the worst three through 10 in all of basketball for any team that's not trying to actively tank. And when you have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, you're not trying to actively tank. When you don't have your own first round pick, there is no active tanking. They have the worst supporting cast in basketball. And one of the realizations I had the other day when I was at, at one of their games is that, man, we really about to watch, potentially watch the last couple years of LeBron's career, and he won't even be in contention for a four ring. It's sad to even think aloud because we, he's always, throughout the course of his career, he's always been on a team that had a chance. This team, as currently constructed, has a 0% chance of making a run. They, they might not even have a chance to make the playoffs. So I, I can understand the frustration and them being 0-3 right now. I, I mean, boy, oh boy, they have to, they have to figure something out. Because, again, you have an old LeBron, but he's still great. And a guy in Anthony Davis who should be, at this point in time, going into his prime. And that's pretty much it. They got back Troy Brown Jr. today, and they decided to throw him in the fire. And, like, that was about to be the savior of the season. I watched Troy Brown Jr. last season. Expectations should not even be to get playing time. But he will probably be a rotational player on the team. So, I mean, bright side again, the defense is looking good. But I can't even say to myself, eventually the jump shooting will come around because they don't have people that are known to be jump shooters. Some teams in basketball right now are struggling to shoot the ball. Trey Young is struggling to shoot the ball through the first three games of the season. But what one thing I know is that Trey Young, throughout the course of his career, has been a plus and a good shooter. There's nobody else on this team that's really known to do that for the Lakers. So I don't have any hope that things will get a lot better now i don't expect them to shoot 22 percent for the season from three but it's not gonna be good and they won't be good but the jazz bro the jazz i cannot believe the story this is i i'm kind of mad at them i'll be honest with you i'm kind of mad at them the fact that they're doing this for the uh, it is three games these three games might not matter if they go on a million game losing streak tomorrow they play against the houston rockets and they have a chance to go four no but something tells me they won't they, they beat the Nuggets, the Wolves, and the Pelicans now. Those are three, like, widely seen playoff teams they beat. And they about to go against a team that people assume is not going to be a playoff team in the Houston Rockets. Watch them lose. Watch them lose. The Rockets ain't won a game. Watch them lose that one. And people are wondering how. How the heck are the Utah Jazz 3 and oh This ragtag group of players. Oh, I was supposed to change into this shirt for this video. It is a throwback jazz shirt. Too bad. I'm repping the second worst three-point shooting team in basketball right here behind the behind the Lakers. That's the Bulls right now. <laughs> it's been great. One thing that I noticed when I'm watching the Utah Jazz, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't watch their, watch their first game. I had no interest. I thought this was about to be a team that was gonna be unwatchable. But when I got to game number two, I got into the second half of that one. I was like, oh, this team actually has a lot of heart and a lot of shot making uh this man jordan clarkson through the first couple games of the season like eventually i'm assuming that the utah jazz are going to decide to move on from him because they'd be crazy not to he's playing himself into worth the first round pick and if you remember before the the death or before the bogdanovich trade it came out that they wanted a first round pick for mike conley they wanted a first round pick for jordan clarkson and bogdanovich and then we got to the trade the bogdanovich trade they didn't get a first round pick but they got something better that was kelly olenic but like they probably was fielding calls about jordan clarkson and nobody wanted to give them a first the way he is super right now he will be worth a late first rounder for sure but larry marketing has been impressive now larry's been my boy since he he was drafted seventh overall and with the pick that was from the jimmy butler trade he has been my boy and i've always had hope from him i, I hate the bulls fans that that hate him and Wendell Carter just because they're doing better in their new places. In reality, if they stayed in Chicago, they probably wouldn't be able to hit the places they are now. I, I do hate basically what we got when we traded those two players away, you know? What what do we have from the Larry Marketing trade? Derrick Jones Jr., that was the trade. But Larry Marketing said that he wanted out. Anyway, no, no Bulls talk. He is 
really hitting the next step and part of that legitimately is having opportunities he's put in the role that he plays with in FIBA basketball he's played with the Olympics where he is the number one guy on the Finnish team and now right now he's kind of the number one and two ish depending on what you think about him and Jordan Clarkson player on the Utah Jazz and he's been damn efficient and I love it, man. He's he's young. He's improving every single season. And he has a lifetime fan in me because I watched him throughout the wee years of his NBA career. And I know he can hoop. And he's putting that on full display. These guys are running people off the three-point line. They are not allowing any open jump shots. And that's kind of the opposite of what the 76ers are doing, which we'll talk about in a second. Briefly, this team is running people off the three-point line. Will Hardy has a defensive identity already, which is crazy when you don't have necessarily great defensive players on your team. We're talking about the team that started Kelly Olynyk, Laurie Market, and Jordan Clarkson. They're running people off the three-point line while subsequently getting a lot of steals in the process. And outside of Jordan Clarkson, because, <laughs> you know, he's Jordan Clarkson. They are sharing the hell out of the ball. It, it just feels like they know there is no one, so everybody can get it. If you open, I'll swing it to you. You know what I'm saying? Kelly O'Lennon got new superpowers, bro. He got new superpowers. That game winner today was rough. And yeah, I know they beat a team that had Zion injured and Brandon Ingram's out with a concussion. But a win is a win at the end of the day. And the Utah Jazz are a watchable team, at least right now in the season. So I'm excited for them and their fans. But I would want to flip the switch to go the opposite direction sooner rather than later. Because, uh... You know, let's talk about another winless team in the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, I gave them the benefit of the doubt to the first two because they played against the Bucks and the Celtics, who a lot of people deem to be real life contenders. One of those two teams could potentially win a championship, and I would not be surprised. And then they got to game number three on their home court and went against the San Antonio Spurs, a team that traded DeJounte Murray for strictly draft capital because they wanted to get Victor Wabanyama. Let's be honest. They they traded for strictly draft capital and did not add anybody to their roster of subsequent value other than some draft picks right they lost that game and not not only did they just lose they got booed off their home court because philly fans are crazy in the good way shout out to the phillies by the way world series versus the astros should be fun i'm watching every single game who am i rooting for hmm maybe the phillies because it's kind of the underdog story the astros kind of do this with dusty and I'm, I'm looking at them right now they just clinched it they just beat the yankees dusty always is wearing his gloves shout out to him for being safe Anyway, the 76 are 0-3 after being booed off their home court after going against a team that is trying to actively lose games. First of all, Spurs fans, I mentioned in my last video that I haven't been able to watch you too much. I watched y'all today, and I'm impressed. I, I'm, I'm going to apologize because I have these preconceived notions about some rosters based on the names that are on them, and I don't really give those rosters a chance, and the Spurs are one of those teams. I'm not doing that anymore. I said earlier in the season, in the offseason that people are expecting the Keldon Johnson jump, and I expected the, the Devin Vassell jump. Yesterday's game, you see everything that you need to see about Devin Vassell, and if he could consistently do that, that is a dub for them i really like jeremy sohan even though he can't score the basketball at the nba level just yet i think his um his range defensively is going to be crazy in a few years i mean it's kind of crazy right now but as soon as he learns the nba game more he's going to be up there and then yaka Pertle. you cannot tell me they can't get a first round pick for yaka Pertle um at the deadline this year so anyway shout out to the spurs y'all get more more um more viewing time we're gonna talk about some more but we need to talk about the 76ers because so far the defense is something that has struggled. I mentioned how the Utah Jazz are running everybody off the three-point line and not allowing people to get open threes. The 76ers are basically leaving people open, and that's not a great recipe. It's not a great recipe, especially when you're going against teams that have good shooting. I guess the Spurs aren't necessarily a team that has great shooting, but they did in that game. And the Boston Celtics did in their game. And I can't even say the Bucs did because that game is like 87 to 82, it felt like. But... They are not getting people off the three-point line, and I'm already seeing 76er fans wanting the head of Doc Rivers. I do believe that Doc Rivers is on a extreme, extreme hot seat. I do think it is too, still too early, though. If they open up the season 0-4 uh, or 0-5, then maybe you do that. You make that call. Where's Mike D'Antoni? Where's, where's Mike D'Antoni right now? Because I think that is the next thing. Because that's what, that's what they're doing. That's what Dale is doing. He's building his previous Rockets teams. And I'm going to bring you a tweet by the great Nikaias Duncan. Shout out to him. A great Twitter follower and a great podcast. Again, this is Nikaias Duncan, Nikaias NBA on Twitter. These are the touches of the time after the James Harden trade. Remember, the James Harden trade happened halfway through the season. And you try to figure out how to integrate a guy like James Harden. As you can see, he got slightly more touches than Joel Embiid. About 22 more touches than Tyrese Maxey. No big deal. He's James Harden. This is what it looks like to the first three games of the season. This is what it looks like now. James Harden's touches are 30 more than Joel Embiid right now through the first three games. 
30 more than the second guy, Tyrese Maxey. And again, we're talking about Joel Embiid at the end of the day. And James Harden and this team are kind of looking very similar to some of the other James Harden teams. But now they have an elite level center. And it's weird. Um, Because that's not... I don't think that's how this team should be playing because I don't think that's how the personnel is. Like, I, I still do believe that the ball should be played through Joel Embiid's hands considering he's one of the most dominant centers in basketball. So that's just, that's just something that, that should be in the back of minds as we continue to watch the 76ers. Can we somehow balance this out? Because right now, they look they look bad. And yes, James, through the two, two of the first three games have looked elite, elite. It hasn't ended with, with a win. So I, I don't know. Again, this is very small sample size when we talk about all of these things, but these are the things that are on my mind for this season. I think that's where we wrap up, um, and we'll be back in another day to talk more hoops. I appreciate you.